Hi guys, I am William De La Cruz, a criminology instructor at a certain university. So, pinili kong gumawa ng lecture about a history policing system of the world as well as policing or the history policing system of the, the Philippines. So, I'll be discussing a all about history of policing system kung paano nga ba nagkaroon ng police hanggang dito sa Pilipinas kung paano nag-develop or kung paano yung mga practice from ancient period or old mod- hanggang ngayong modern period so samahan nyo ako especially kung you want to become a criminology student crimin- and then you want to become criminologist uh, pag natapos nyo yung bachelors nyo Tapos kung gusto nyo lang din malaman yung historia ng ng police, kung paano nga ba nagka-police? Police na ba agad? Or ano muna? Tapos kung magre-review kayo ng board exam, so this is very good also. Uh, malalaman nyo yung history ng police. So I'll be explaining everything na alam ko. I hope ma-enjoy nyo to. So this is free. Ayan. And kung magugustuhan nyo, so, pwede nyo siyang ulit-ulitin. Yan. So, start na ako. Um, subject 101 tayo. Leia 1, history. So, this is my favorite part of your Leia. The policing system of the world. So, may tanong ako sa inyo, mga future criminologists, future criminology, and mga criminology student. Uh, saan nga ba nag-start? Or... Paano nga ba tayo nagka-police ngayon? So, on the, with regards to the history of the world, sino ang nauna? Ayan. Actually guys, kung may kita sa internet, we have on the Asian period, or the primitive Asian, you have your, you have your Medjays of Rome, di ba? Ah, no, no, Medjays of Egypt. Okay, Medjays of Egypt. So, lagi nating nakikita medjays of Egypt. Yes, they are the medjays of Egypt. Pero saan ba nag-origin itong medjays of Egypt? At sino ba itong mga to? Yan. Your medjays of Egypt are mercenaries from Rome. So, they are from Rome. They are not originated from Egypt. Nagkaroon na lang ng Egyptian medjays dahil din sa mga medjays of Rome. Mamaya ako sasabihin. Yung medjays of Rome natin guys, which is naging medjays of Egypt later on, is a mercenary or a warrior for her hunters. Yan. Na very good with regards to battle, combat, hand-to-hand, sword, spear, arrows. Yan, napakagaling. There are mercenaries, warriors na for her. Ngayon, itong mga payro from Egypt. So, the qualification of this medjays of Rome to become a very good soldier. So, sabi nila, magagamit natin itong mga magagamit natin itong mga medjays of Rome para matrain or maprotektahan tayo from pananakop. So, the Egyptian Pharaoh hired medjays of Rome to protect them from invaders, to go to war with their soldiers, and lastly, to train their soldiers. So, this medjays of Rome first protect the Pharaohs, second protect the community of them, for example, with the help of the soldiers ng mga origin origin uh, original soldiers of of uh, Egypt and then train sabi nila kasi kag- magagaling sila for uh, on how to how they utilize uh, spear commonly guys is the medjays of medjays of Rome utilizes spear and arrows they are very good with regards on utilizing those uh, combat weapon so sabi ng mga pero why not to train Medjay's uh, soldier of Egypt? So, 
pumayag tong mga mercenary natin na mag-train. Siyempre, mercenary, they are being paid. Sige, babayaran namin kayo ng malaki. Train nyo lang yung mga, med- yung mga Egyptian soldier namin to become like you uh, uh, on the combat. So, sabi, sige, sige, trainin nila. That's why you have your Medjays of Rome. Yan. At yung mga Medjays of Rome na to, guys, they utilize monkeys and eagles with regards on intelligence. Actually, two monkeys yung ginagamit nila. One with the big monkey or the gorilla being utilized at war. Gumagamit sila ng mga hayop to utilize war. Ngayon naman, they are being utilized or they are utilizing eagles uh, for eye. For something like they utilize eagles for transport of transport of message and they utilize eagles for intelligence purposes also those little monkeys yeah they utilize little monkeys also for intelligence purposes while big monkeys are being utilized for war so that is your primitive ancient that is your ancient period of policing or yun yung mga unang pulis nyo dun. so they are the magics so kung kung nagugulan kayo with regards to the to the uh, what you call to the qualification or kung nagugulan kayo with regards to the to the action of the medjays on combat uh, I have example for example yung nilalaro yung Assassin's Creed okay syempre guys lahat lahat dito sa mundo may pattern Assassin's Creed Yan, yung Assassin's Creed na nilalaro nyo, Assassin's Creed na pinapapanood nyo, that's how Medjays of Rome, or and then becomes Medjays of Egypt, do combat action. So, yun, yun, yun yung pattern yung, ng Assassin's Creed nyo. The Medjays of Rome and the Medjays of Egypt, that's how they move. That's how they do the work with regards on combat. Ganun sila kagagaling. So, yung Assassin's Creed nyo, that's how Medjays uh, act during battle. Ganun kagaling. So, they are, sabi ko sa inyo, they are mercenaries. They are hard to kill and to protect. So, ganun sila kagaling. So, syempre, kung yun yung trabaho mo, huu, sayan mo. And gagaling ka ng gagaling later on, pabang tumatagal ka dun sa trabaho mo. So, yun nga, sabi ko sa inyo, they utilize monkeys, may utilize um, eagle, Hanggang ganun sila kagagaling gumalaw. That is your Medjays of Rome. They are the Medjays of Egypt originated from Medjays of Rome. Okay, kaya nagkaroon ng Medjays of Egypt, trinain ng mga Rome, Medjays ang, ang Egyptian soldier, and then they become Medjays of Egypt. Okay, so, pero ang origin nun, Medjays of Rome, ha? Huh? Okay, next would be your uh, 1,000 to 1,500 uh uh, 1,000 to 1,500 era is your Anglo-Saxon. So, yung mga babanggitin ko dito is the great influencer of the policing system. Not only on the police, but also in some part, okay? So, some part of the, the uh, some part of the making of laws, mga ganun. So, mga anong nangyari, paano implement ang law, paano nagkaroon ng hanggang ngayon, yung peaceful society, yan, hanggang mga naging, gano, gano yung training ng police, na naging from this barbaric hanggang this na professional na, yan. So, syempre, dumatay sa history, barbaric talaga. So, back to the Anglo-Saxon uh, period, which is uh, 1,000 to 1,500 on this era is the Anglo-Saxon. So, one of the great influencer is the Anglo-Saxon period. Why? Okay. This Anglo-Saxon period has been influenced by a three current contributors. Okay? The Anglo-Saxon period, always remember, influ- has been influenced by three <clears throat> three current contributor. One is the community and family. Number 2 is the king. And then number 3 is the uh, number one is community, community and family. Number two is king, and number three is the church. Okay, tama. Tikanang mga limutan. 
Na back to the number one. Why community and family? Okay. Community because they are being inspired or they are being mandated by a collective responsibility. Collective responsibility is the community acted to protect each other. Okay, that is your collective responsibility. And what are the influence of this correct collective responsibility on the Anglo-Saxon? They have the the so-called <clears throat> they have the so-called uh, village rib. Okay, which is the the police of the of their of their certain area yan village rib so kung ilan ang district ng district ng Anglo-Saxon may mga raming mga village rib doon so yun yung mga police nila yun lang ba hindi um meron silang tinatawag na uh tithing men which is the 9 plus 1 uh, of a uh, 13 years old boys lalaki mga lalaki to so, to protect each other, not protect also, also, uh, to protect the protect the community from from outcasts or outlaw people, and then they have also the so-called um, uh, burglar, burglar, yeah, burglar is a a fine. Oh, so yeah, that's a fine of the burglar means world means world means man man, and then glur means tax. So burglar is a man tax. Man tax is if you commit a mistake or commit crime on kapwa yeah, sa kapwa mo sa kapwa mo ka Anglo Saxon on those period. Not all necessary is a capital punishment or a punishment. But, merong mga nakalabel as burglar or fine only. So, magbabayad lang yun ng fine and they are called burglar. Um, another collective responsibility of the Anglo-Saxon is the UN cry. Yeah. Ano tong UN cry na to? The UN cry is... This is the community of the Anglo-Saxon. Ito yung biktima. Pupunta siya dun sa gitna. And then, sasabi, sisigaw siya, shout, help, help. Yan. Um, may nagnanakaw, may magnanakaw. Yan. Tapos, <clears throat> all the able-bodied men would go to the center and and ask what happened. Anong nangyayari? Ganun. Sabi nung sumisigaw, may nagnanakaw, may nagnanakaw. Sabi nung biktima. Ngayon, all these ba- able-bodied men will will then search for that magdanakaw. Ngayon, sir, paano yung ano? Uh, non-able-bodied men. Therefore, hindi kasama yung mga yun. Sir, paano naman able-bodied men ako? Hindi ako pumunta dun. Okay then. Medyo kawawa ka pag hindi ka pumunta dun. Because that is a sin to the Anglo-Saxon. That is one of your responsibility or corrective responsibility. Nga, sabi ko sa inyo, di ba? Ano pa yung consequence? You will be then subject for their trial pagka hindi ka pumunta. Bakit? Kasi, but hindi ka pumunta? Hindi ka naman magnanakaw, di ba? So, the concept is, pag hindi ka pumunta dun, isa ka dun sa kasama ng magnanakaw. Or is ikaw yung nagnakaw. So, isa ka sa isusunong mga tao. So, kaya pag may sumigaw na may magnanakaw, all able-bodied men, will then go to the center and then ask what happened and then after the after nung sabihin nung tao na kung ano yung nangyayari sa kanya yan kailangan yung tulungan pag hindi ka tumulong it's either ikaw yung yung mismong nanakit ikaw yung mismong nagnakaw or or um or else uh ikaw yung nanakit ikaw yung nagnakaw and then, or else, kasama mo yung nanakit or kasama mo yung nagnanakaw. So, lahat kayo na hindi tutulong, then, huhulihin ng mga, mga, mga pumunta sa center. Ganun. So, ganun sila. That's the collective responsibility of Anglo-Saxon. Ano pa ba? Um, they have the so-called blood feud. Yeah, blood feud. 
Ano ba tong blood feud na to? Uh, B-L-O-O-D, the blood. And then, feud is F-E-U-D. This is a blood feud na yan. Kantuhan lang tayo dito. Um, blood feud is the Asian term for tribal war. Yan. So, during those days, they have the tribal war or the blood feud. Yung tawag nila dun. And this Anglo-Saxon period. Blood feud because... Uh, if if your m- member of the family is being hurt, and then yung member ng family mo binawi an yung member ng family nila yan ubusan, okay? So this is our tribal war, di ba? So during those ter- days they have the blood feud. So pwede sa kanila yon na bawi mo yung familia mo, bawi din nila yung familia nila. So that is blood feud, okay? Next is your um oath yan mag oath ka na 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 hindi ka gagawa ng masama yan that is Anglo-Saxon period next is your church uh Anglo-Saxon period is very god-fearing people Anglo-Saxon period is very very uh, uh, god-fearing people why Anglo-Saxon period believe that there is life after after the life here on earth. So, takot silang gumawa ng masama kasi ang turo sa kanila once na gumawa ka ng masama, mapupunta ka agad doon sa hindi mo maging magugustuhan na lugar. Pero pag naging morally upright ka na tao, mama, hindi, ka tako, hindi ka takot mamatay kasi mapupunta ka doon sa tinatawag nating heaven. Ganun. So, that is your Anglo-Saxon, or that's one of the influencer of the Anglo-Saxon period is the church. May punishment ba pag nag-violate sa church? Meron, of course. Ano ang ginagawa ng church? They are the one um, utilizing the so-called ordeals. Not all, but they have few, like um, uh, ordeals of the Eucharist. And so, and then hot water trial bar ordeal na trial bar ordeal by hot water and then yung eucharist yan so during those ordeal guys is nandu doon yung head of the church pagka ginagawa yan bakit ano ba tong ordeal na to na sinasabi mo sir this ordeal are punishment for some acts okay during anglo saxon and you are being punished because you are possessed by a demonic. Yan. And then, if you are not being possessed by a demon, then you are being saved by God. Ibig sabihin, uh, tinulungan ka ni Lord kasi hindi ikaw yung, yung may gawa nung, nung or pinintektahan ka ni, ng, ng divine. You are being protected by a divine kasi, kasi hindi ikaw yung gumawa ng crime. Something like that. Sir, paano yan? Kanyari, hot, hot iron, hahawakan mong ganyan. Tapos, eh, hin, uh, not necessary ba na pro-protectahan ka or not necessary ba na pro-protect na yung paghawak mo nga, pag ganyan mo, yung kamay mong ganyan, ganyan pa rin. No, no, hindi naman ganun. So, may leeway. For example, hinawakan mo yung iron, hot iron and then, uh, binitaan mo na ganyan. So, masusugat, of course, diba? Masusugat, malalap nos. Uh, they are being given three days yan. Three days to... 3 days para mag-heal yun normally. So, kung meron silang, meron silang pattern, pagka nag-heal daw yun within 3 days na normal healing, so you are being protected and God or the divine uh, choose to protect you. Pero kung hindi yun nag-heal sa tamang pamamaraan during Anglo-Saxon ng 3 days, yan, 3 days hindi daw nag-heal, ganyan. So, you are the perpetrator. So, ganun. Okay. So, that is the influence of the church. They are very God-fearing. Ano ba ba? Um, the influence of the church is you are being buried face down. So, sino ba naman gustong ma-buried face down pagka-criminal ka, di ba? For example, ito ah. Imbis na nakaharap ka tayo doon na, na ililibing, nakaharap tayo sa lupa para diretso daw tayo doon sa, sa place na ayaw nating mapuntahan pag-criminal ka. So, if you are a criminal and then um you wanted if you are a criminal and then you your capital punishment binehead ka yan o kaya 
Uh, kung anong ginawa sa basta pinatay ka, basta masama yung ginawa mo sa sobra. So, behead, capital punishment yung punishment mo. You are ibuburied ka, of course. Pero, pagka buried sa'yo, ililibing ka. Pero pagka nilibing ka, naka-face down ka. Yung ulo mo, nakaharap dun sa lupa, naka-face down. Para daw, diretso yung kaluluwa mo doon sa imbyerno. Yan. Wala ka daw kasing karapatan during Anglo-Saxon na mapunta sa langit pag kriminal ka. So, that is the the concept of your Anglo-Saxon. So, sino nga ba naman wala kang karapatan? Ito yung karapatan mo dun hanggang mamatay. Tinanggal nila, ha? di ba? That is your Anglo-Saxon period. And then, another um, influencer of Anglo-Saxon is your king. Of course, King Anglo-Saxon. Ayan. King Anglo or the king during the Anglo-Saxon is the one who is in charge in the uh, maintain maintenance of the peace and order of his community. Okay? Um ano to? Yung king guys is the one who who do the punishment with regards on beheading and and andun yung church nandoon dun ha? yung head of the church and king nandoon din. Pero kasi yung king yung magsasabi na you are being beheaded or you are being mutilated or you are being maimed. Uh, ano ba yung magkakaiba ng maiming at mutilation guys? Maiming guys is puputulan ka ng, ng body parts essential for you to work or working. Essential body parts for you to work. So, magtratrabaho yung mga parts ng katawan natin na ginagamit pang trabaho. For example, kamay, paa, yan, yan. kamay, ito. Uh, yan, puputulin or this one hanggang dito, puputulin yan those are pag pinutul yun, that is maiming uh, during Anglo-Saxon okay, sir, paano naman pag pinutulan ako ng tenga lang pinutulan ako tenga, pinutulan ako ng daliri ito, 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 pinutul lang to okay, may essential, makakapag-work pa naman ako and then that is your mutilation okay, during Anglo-Saxon so, yun yung pagkakaiba ng maiming at saka mutilation during Anglo-Saxon ha? ano pa Para sa naman yung maiming, um, para malabel ka as criminal, yan. So, pinutulan ng daliri, yan. So, you are being labeled as criminal on a certain crime during Anglo-Saxon. For example, nagnakaw ka, okay? O, ang katumbas nun is, um, puputulan ng daliri. O, puputulan ng daliri. Pag nakita nilang puputulan ng daliri, um, ibig sabihin nun, you are a magnanakaw during Anglo-Saxon. Okay? Kasi sa Norman period, guys, branding. Nalagyan ka dito, pak. Ngayon, 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 pag meron kang letter, kanyari, M dito, yan, or W, ibig sabihin, magnanakaw ka, yan sa mukha, ganyan, during, ang, during Norman period. Pero sa kanila, guys, beheading, ang capital punishment, patanggal ng ulo, yan, or, tapos, ang kanilang, um, parang, branding is, tanggalan ka ng daliri, ganyan, para ma-alarm yung mga tao na ikaw ay masamang tao. Okay? Um, with regards to the punishment of of Anglo, ang Anglo-Saxon, uh, yun na, okay na tayo doon. And then, ano pa ba yung um, so, hindi ko makalimutan guys, uh, the village rib, no? Uh, this village rape are the one who will impose this the the full-fledged soldier of the Anglo-Saxon these are the one who will impose the tax collection lahat-lahat ganyan so peace and order so these are under the king king kumbaga yung PNP natin under ng DILG diba ayan ganyan so imagine yung DILG natin is the king so they are under of this ayan so ito yung mga village rape they are the one who impose tax okay Ayan, recall lang yung Titing Men, 10 members, okay? 10 members of the Titing Men, uh, 9, 9 plus 1, which should become the leader, okay, over the age of 12. So, 13 years old and above will be the Titing Men as responsible to each in sa grupo nila at saka sa community na they are na-assign sa kanila. So, formerly guys, your village rib is, is akurakot. Akurakot tong mga village rib natin. So, during Asian period, corruption is already present. So, this is a matter of of this a tradition. Ayan. So, corruption is already a tradition. During, so may tao, may corruption. Okay? So, it's already there. Corruption is already there. Hindi na natin makawala talaga. Kahit anong gusto natin. So, discipline na talaga yun. 
Pero hindi na kasi talaga mawawala yan. During Asian period, there is already a corruption. Okay? Kaya nga may mga war. Kaya nga may away between king and king and prince. Prince to prince. Kasi may corruption. Okay? Next is your... Um, bakit ba nag, nag-down yung, yung Anglo-Saxon natin? Kasi, simple lang. Sinakop sila ng Norman period. So, Norman period, okay. From a, from medieval, which is your medjays, Anglo-Saxon, and then Norman period policy. So, Norman period policy naman tayo. So, yan guys, Norman policy system naman tayo. Ano ba na iba dito? Actually, konti lang naman yung naiba sa Norman period. After nilang sakupin ang Anglo-Saxon, they're still being governed by, or influenced by three. Yan. Still, the Catholic Church. So, this is specified as Catholic Church. Norman period uh, is specified it as Catholic Church, yung kanilang, kanilang pinaniniwalaan. Okay? And then, the member of the Catholic Church has now greater power on the Norman period or the Norman policy system. Uh, and then, the Catholic Church influences the king, which is the second, the king. And then the third is the fear of these two on the so-called rebellion of the of the Anglo-Saxon. Siyempre, sinakop kayo. Siyempre, hindi naman... Siyempre, ako. Sasakupin ako tayo, Pilipinas. Sasakupin ng ibang bansa. Ganyan. For example lang, ha? Um, siyempre, sino ba naman gusto na susundin natin yun? Eh, meron tayong sarili, di ba? Na batas dito. For example, like that on the Asian period. Ganyan. So, um, there will be a risk or rise of a... Rise of a a uh, rebellion which is which is Anglo-Saxon uh, do but yet fail so many times bakit? kasi itong Norman period guys magagaling itong Norman period the king and the Catholic Church utilizes their power to make laws okay for example is the is the forest law of the of the Norman period so itong Norman period the, the king make a forest law the so called forest law Itong forest law is hindi pwedeng uh, mangaso ang mga Anglo-Saxon, uh, Anglo-Saxon people on the property of the king of the Norman period. So, pag sinakop ka nila, parang naman, property ka na nila, di ba? So, when, you, when the property is being, the pro- when the property is now on the Norman period, hindi na sila pwedeng mangaso dun sa forest na yun or else you will be facing a consequence mabigat gri gri or mabigat na consequence ano pa para maiwasan tong rebellion na kinakatakutan ng Anglo-Saxon ng Norman period na ginagawa ng Anglo-Saxon they make law for example is the the murderum murderum fine okay, murderum fine the murderum fine is mur, murderum fine uh, is a when an a member of the of the Norman period die, kahit sino, basta Norman period people yan, okay, the Anglo-Saxon, pe- the Anglo-Saxon people will help to investigate or will help, will give their full extent of, of, of help. Bibigay nila, yan. Yung buo lahat-lahat na tulong nila para masolve lang kung sino or mahanap kung sino yung pumatay doon sa isang Norman people. Paano kung hindi ka tumulong or paano kung hindi sila tumulong or hindi nila masob? Guys, they are being punished. The community of the Anglo-Saxon will be punished because of that one murdered Norman people. So, ganun, ginagawa ng batas para maiwasan yung rebellion ng Anglo-Saxon sa Norman period. ba Galing ni King Norman. Um, ano ba ba yung ginawa nila dito? So, the the burglar, which is the fine of the person to person to each other, is now uh, natanggal na. So, anong pinalit? The fine is now be, pag gumawa ka ng masama sa isang tao doon, Anglo-Saxon man or Norman man, na, na people, or whatever may be na belong sila sa community, lahat ng fine mapupunta sa king. 
Okay, kung ako ginawan kita ng masama dati, magbabayad ako sa'yo. Ngayon, hindi na. Ako na gumawa ng masama sa'yo, magbabayad ako sa king. Ganun na. Lahat ng treasure will be then mapupunta sa king. That is your Norman policy. Bukod doon, they adopt the tithing men, which is the 10, 9 plus 1 equals 10. A member of the community have the collective responsibility to protect the community. At ano pa ba? Pinalitan ng ng Norman period ang ang Shireed. Ah uh, pinalitan ng Norman period ang village rib from Shireed. Common dati kada isang village merong village rib. Okay, parang barangay, may isang barangay kapitan. Ngayon hindi na ganoon. Okay? On the Norman period or Norman policing system, the 55 district has now one village rib. Ang tawag natin doon is not village rib, is now having shy rib. Okay, the traveling judge. So, itong isa lang na to, itong isa na to, ang umiikot doon sa district ng Anglo-Saxon. Ang Norman period, sorry. Ng Norman period, siya na ang umiikot doon the 55 district to, to try what? Lahat ng cases. So, isa lang, isa lang. Center, siya lang. So, kung sinabi niyang beheaded ka, pak, beheaded ka, sabi mo, fine ka, fine ka, yan. So, siya ang nagde-decide this, this traveling judge. So, yun lang naman yung pagkakaiba ko muli ng Norman, Norman period sa Anglo-Saxon. So, in din nila yung mga mga Anglo-Saxon, yung mga practice ng, ng Anglo-Saxon. in ni King Norman during his time. So, yun lang yung konting na bago from tandaan nyo, uh, lumalabas din sa board. The, from Anglo-Saxon, that is village rib. While on the Norman period, that is a shy rib. Okay? <clears throat> um, dagdag ko lang. On the Norman period, there is the so-called trial by combat ordeal. Which, this is our ordeal, trial by combat, which is, nyari, um, nagsuntukan yung dalawang tao, okay? So, nakuli silang dalawa. So, they will be subject for trial by combat. Kung sino man yung manalo, o di ganun. Pag lalabanin yung dalawa, and then kung sino manalo, then siya yung banado. That's your trial by ordeal. Tinatagdag din da, sa Norman period policy. Yun. And also, dagdag ko lang, kanyari, uh, ang Anglo-Saxon, no? nag -rebel. So, all capital punishment is being increased sa pinaka mabigat na pamamaraan and for example simple simple theft yung ginawa mo magnanakaw diba commonly yung ginagawa ng, ang, ng Anglo-Saxon is mutilation so dito naman sa ano natin sa Anglo-Saxon is branding so tinatatakan yung mukha ganyan tinatatakan dito tinatatakan dito na to alarm the community that you are a a magnanakaw so Pagka mayroong katatak dito, yan, tatak kung saan-saan. Yung may kita talaga ng tao. So, ibig sabihin nun, uh, dapat alarm sila na magnanakaw pa. Ganun. So, yun yung nadagdag. Tapos, still, continue pa rin. Outload. Uh, yung mga brand, mga, uh, ayun, ito pala. Uh, burn, burn at the stake. So, susunugin ka sa, sa plaza. Yan yun yung isang capital punishment nila pagka nakita ka nilang nagre-rebel sa kanila sunugin sa plaza yan that is your that's your um uh, norman period so next is westminster period so ito na yung mas may enjoy nyo kasi medyo upgraded na to westminster period so dito tayo yan guys westminster period naman okay kwentuhan lang yan simple lang kwentuhan lang tayo um westminster period guys ang pinaka points to ponder here as related to criminology, this is King Charles II time, okay? Westminster period is much uh, security. Yeah, so, much security kasi this is the foundation of your stat statute of 1295, which is the curfew nowadays. Itong closing of the gates during uh, night time of the London. So, that is your statute of 1295 take note guys that is the foundation of your modern curve in nowadays and then ano ba ba ito this is a normal dito sa the sa west minister periods na introduce ang watch and ward okay what is the watch and ward or the bellman and rattle watchman 
or etong watch and ward na to guys is they they are some kind of um, hard for hard na mga tao na security yan na mag-uumpisa during sun sunset uh, during sunset tama pagbaba ng araw hanggang sunrise okay so during sunset mag-start ng trabaho ng mga watchmen and then sunrise mag-end yung trabaho nila why to protect the the certain uh, establishment from magnanakaw so yun yung natandaan nyo sa sa Westminster period which is points to finder okay so dun naman tayo sa sa modern policing system which is the father of your modern policing system is Sir Robert Peel he is the one who who which is the founder of Metropolitan Police so bakit bakit nga ba siya uh, modern policing system syempre um Kung bakit si Sir Robert Peel, guys, ang father of modern policing system is though he is the one who enacted or created the Metropolitan Force of London, which is the first, uh, the first organized uniform police force of London. Or this force was later on named as the Scotland Yard. So, yan. Meron na tayong first uniform police. So, ito yung mga naka-commonly na, ano pa to? Mga naka-Americana. Yung ganun. And code. Tapos may mga habang mga mga cup. So, yun yung mga itsura nila during those those times. So, that is your modern policing system. We have your, we have also on modern policing system, your, the Henry Brothers, which is the Henry Fielding, ano, Fielding Brothers, yan, which is Henry Fielding and John Fielding. Henry Fielding is the one who found the Bow Street Runners, while his brother, blind brother, uh, the one who is in charge in Bow Street Courts. Okay, makaangas din itong mga ito. Oh, take note nyo na lang. Henry Fielding is the one who found the Bow Street, Bow Street Runners. Sila yung nasa labas. Yan. While Henry, while John Fielding is the one in charge on the trials ng no mga nahuhuli nila. Yan naman yung Bow Street Courts. Okay. So, okay na tayo guys. That is your history 101 sa akin, sa Leia. And, punta na tayo doon sa ating Philippine setting. So, ito na yung pinaka-enjoy. I'll explain the foundation of your PNP uh, dito sa ating, of course, PNP Pudis ng Pilipinas nga. Pudis ng Pilipinas, PNP. Okay? No, Philippine National Police. Okay? So, I'll be explaining now from one at a time para malinawan kayo kung bakit nga ba from this naging ganito na tayo. Okay? Okay guys, in Philippine setting, um, police is created formerly started during Spanish period. So, during Spanish period guys, your police is intended not for peacekeeping. Hindi. And also, not intended for crime prevention. Rather, it was created as extension of the colonial uh, military establishment of the of the Spanish. So, hindi sila for peacekeeping? No. They are not for crime prevention, crime investigation? No. That they are the extension of this of the colonial uh, colonial establishment of the of the Spanish period. So, before yun guys, Bago tayo sa open commonly, we ha bago tayo sa open is meron naman talaga tayong tinatawag na ancient roots. So, those ancient roots are already there. Bago pa tayo sa open. Okay? Sila nga, Jelan to, ano uh, na, Isla Bulapu, they are being called as ancient roots. Ancient roots because they are the one who protected our lovable Philippines during during pananakop. Pero nasakop tayo, di ba? Pero they are being called as Asian roots. These Asian roots are the forerunner of the contemporary police system. Was the practice of barangay shifting. So, kaya nga, di ba? Hanggang ngayon, meron tayong barangay-barangay. So, they are the Asian roots. Yung mga barangay captain natin, barangay shifting noon, the datu-datu, the raha, they are the Asian roots. So, bago tayo nagka-PNP, una, Asian roots tayo. Okay? 
What are the practice of the Asian roots? They are the one who protect the barangay, which is they're headed by the Datu. They are the one who protect the crops and livestock from wild animals and other invaders. Okay? Next is your... Ayan na. Nung nasakop tayo first, we have the Carabineros de Seguridad Publica. Apat to ha? Carabineros de Seguridad Publica. They are the one... They are being organized... Or they are organized in 1712. 1712 for the purpose of carrying the regulation of the Department of the State of... Yung sino ba nanako sa atin? Spain. Diba? Spain. This is Spanish colonial. Okay. They are not intended for public safety and crime prevention, but they are the intended for the extension of the colonial state or the establish colonial establishment of the state of Spain. Okay, so sinakop tayo. Okay, this was armed and considered as the mounted police. Okay, years after this kind of police organized discharge the duty of the port, harbor, and river police. Okay, bakit? Mount police. Mga nakakabayo sila guys. Okay. And then, after that, on 18, 18, uh, 1712, we have your 1800s, which is 1836. So, okay, the Guardrilleros or the Quardillo. This was a body of rural police organized in each town and establishment by a royal decree of 18, a decree of January 1836. Okay, this decree provided that 5% of the able bodied male inhabitants of each province were to establish in the police organization for 3 years. So, guys, for example, the able bodied ng, ng ating male inhabitant sa isang probinsya, yung 5% nun, guys, is a mandatory, will join the Guardillo or the Guardilleros to serve the Spanish government. Okay? Pilipino o oh, oh, Pilipino, okay? To serve the Spanish government for three years, okay? Ang trabaho nila, they are the one who will, be, they become soldiers, okay? And then, we have your Guardia Civil. This is 1852. Kanina guys, yung Guardillo nyo is 1836. Okay, so, year, uh, 1836 and then here comes 1852. Actually, it's what, February 12, 1852 is the creation or creation of your Guardia Civil. This was created by royal decree issued by the crown during 1852 to partially relieve the Spanish peninsular troops of their works in policing towns. So, this Guardia Civil are the one who is now in charge of policing the town. Okay? It consists of a body of Filipino policemen organized originally in each of the provincial capital of the central provinces of Luzon under the Alcalde Mayor, the mayor. Okay? This the duty of your guardia civil is to protect the the town. Okay, the pa, they are the one who implement the the rules and regulation during a certain town. Those are the guardia civils. Okay, next is during 1901, guys, the American establishment, the United State Philippine Commission, head by General Howard Taft as first Governor General on January 9, 1901. Okay. After natin masakop guys ng, Span ng Spanish or Spain, masakop na tayo America. Which is, yung America naman guys, is help us to develop a certain uh, policing system. So first is the Metropolitan Police Force of Manila was organized pursuant to Act Number no. 70. Okay, those, the year is January 9, 1901. Okay. So, this becomes the basis for the celebration of the anniversary of the Manila's Finest. So, bakit Manila's Finest? Kasi sila nga yung unang police. They are the Metropolitan Police Force. Manila. Okay? Next is your Act num After Act Number no. 70, here comes your Act Number no. 175. So, tandaan nyo na lang. Act Number no. 70 and then Act Number no. 175. Entitled, An Act Providing for the Organization and government of an insular constabulary enacted on July 18, 1901. Okay? What is this Act Number 175? Um, Act Number 70 is the creation of our Metropolitan Police Force of Manila. Okay? Tandaan. Your, while your Act Number 175 is the creation of your IC. This is your insular constabulary. Ano ba ang trabaho nitong mga insular constabulary, guys? Commonly, they are still soldiers. Okay, soldiers, soldiers pa rin to. Okay, Captain Henry Allen is the first chief of the Philippine Constabulary in 1901. 
Philippine Constabulary during 1901 while it is under Act Number no. 193. Okay, created the Manila Police Department enacted on July 31, 1901. Sino ang first uh, chief of Philippine Constabulary? That is your Captain Henry Allen. Saan siya nakabase? Sa Manila Police Department. Ano yung act na nag-create sa Manila Police Department? Act number 193. Okay? And then, here comes Captain George Curry as the first chief of police of the MPD. Okay, Manila Police Department. Ah, nagkamali ako. Wait lang, guys. So, Captain Henry Allen is the first chief police of the Philippine Constabulary. Okay, sorry. After Insular Constabulary, guys, there is the, this is the so-called thing, Insular Const, uh, Police Constabulary. So, the first chief of police constabulary is Captain Henry Allen. Take note. And yun, during Act Number no. 193, there is a creation of Manila Police Department. But the first chief police of Manila Police Department is Captain George Curry. We have the so-called Captain JJ. So, Curry Allen, yan. So, Curry is the first chief police of Manila Police Department during July, 30, July 31, 1901. Well, Allen is the first chief of, chief of the Philippine Constabulary. Okay, mga Amerikano, ha? Okay, sorry. Ang kamali si Sir nyo. Then, Act number 255. The act that renamed the Insular Constabulary into Philippine Constabulary. Okay, so formerly, guys, Act number 175 is the Insular Constabulary. This is the creation of your Insular Constabulary. Ngayon, guys, during Act number 255, Actually, 1901 lang din to, okay? July, August, September, October. Four months lang na pangalan ng Insular Constabulary. Pinalitan na rin, okay? Pinalitan na. Sinong nakaupo during those time? Do, that is Captain, Hen, uh, Captain Henry Allen. Uh, why Captain, Captain Henry Allen? So, sabi ko kasi, di ba siya ang first chief police of the Philippine Constabulary? which a former name is Insular Constabulary. So, during July 18, 1901, the Act number no. 175 is now being implemented, which is the Insular Constabulary. Okay, sama-sama lahat, parang sundalo, okay? Ngayon, guys, during, after four months, July, August, September, uh, July, August, September, October, or uh, three months, October 3, 1901, yan. From July 18, 1901 to October 3, 1901 it was now being renamed as Police Constabulary take note Police Constabulary Act number 255 that is your Police Constabulary it was being renamed from Insular Constabulary of Act number 175 which is the creation ni rename lang ng Act number 255 which is the Police Constabulary sino ang pinakaunang chief that is Captain Henry Allen which is the first chief of Police Constabulary. Ano? Sino to mga to? They are the PC, okay? And these are those blue uniforms na mga police officer natin formerly. Sir, paano ang recruitment dito? Pwedeng turo-turo? Police ka na bukas. Okay, ganun. Ganun pa lang noon, okay? And while you are being appointed by the Alcalde Mayor or the Mayor, then, then you are now qualified to become a police officer. Sir, ano ba ang trabaho ng mga PC noon? Ang trabaho nila, guys, is tribe bureau. Actually, lahat. Peace and order, crime prevention, and uh, bumero din sila, jail officer din sila. Okay? Those are the trabaho o ng mga former PC noon. O nung insular kong sabay and PC noon. Okay? Na-divide na lang sila later on. Okay? Itong mga ibang PC, pumunta sa FAR. Sa bumbero, na bumbero. Itong ibang PC, nagpunta sa PNP. Yung ibang PC naman, nagpunta sa jail. Okay? So, ganun. Amaya, I'll explain further, furthermore. Okay, while the Executive Order Number 389 ordered that the PC Consular be one of the four service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines enacted December 23, 1940 during post-American. So, pamali, um, alam nyo yung khaki, bra khaki brown, ganun ang uniform ng PC nun. Okay, and then RA, here comes your RA. Uh, 4864, okay? Other known as the Police Professional Act of 1966. Sir, RA 4864 na ba agad-agad? Muna? No. Okay, pero dito muna tayo sa RA 4864 is the professionalization 
or the Police Professionalization Act of 1966, enacted on September 8, 1966, created the Police Commission or the POLCOM. Nagkaroon na ng recruitment ang PNP na ang police natin. Okay, pero yung yung ating mga PC nandun dun pa rin. Okay? Created POLCOM as the the Police Commission. Okay? As the supervisory agency to oversee the training and professionalization of the local police force under the office of the President. Later on, Polcom was renamed into the National Police Commission. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, this is the agency to oversee the training and professionalization of the local police force natin. So, during 4864, na-create ang Polcom natin under, under the president. Okay? So, sino ba ang president nun? Of course, that is your FM Marcos. Okay? Ferdinand Marcos, declare martial law. Kung kaya meron kayo nung PDPD. Okay? During the martial law, many laws are being implemented. Okay? Especially on your police service or police recruitment. So, martial law, guys. Pompor 864. Here comes your PB 765. Bakit PB? Kasi we are on the martial law. So, these are on the presidential degree. So, that's why PD 765. Okay? Otherwise known as the Integration of Act of 1975. So, yung 4864 nyo guys is 1966. After that is your 1975, which is the decla PD. We are under the martial law during this, this days, uh, this time. Enacted on August 8, 1975, establishing the integrate or the INP, the so-called Integrated National Police, composed of the Philippine Constabulary. So, yung mga police na, ano, mga, mga Philippine Constabulary natin na, or those PC is now being integrated into INP or the Integrated National Police. Okay? As the nucleus and the Integrated Local Police Force as component under the Ministry of National Defense. Okay? Transferred the NAPOLCOM. So, later on, it was being renamed to NAPOLCOM na Napolcom from the office of the president to the Ministry of National Defense during martial law period. Okay, this is PD 765. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, under president ang under president. So, wala pa naman tayo DLLG during those time. So, under ng president ang Polcom. Polcom muna siya, created during uh, RA 4864. And then, nilipat during PD 765 sa Ministry of National Defense. Siyempre nga naman, president nun may martial law, siya ang in charge. sa lahat-lahat, especially the security of everything, di ba? So, PD-765, the Polcom, which is now renamed to Napolcom, is now being transferred from President, of the President to the Ministry of National Defense of the Philippines. Okay, and now the PC is now uh, established the INP, composed of the PC, established during 765 also ang INP, which is composed of the Philippine Constabulary, uh, members which is now they are now being the INP okay next is your providing measures to improve the administrative and operation framework for maintaining peace and order the provincials I mean, we have your executive order number 1012 transferred to the city and municipal government the operational supervision and direct overall INP units assigned within their locality issued on March 22, 1985 ano ba tong benefits na to? For my dear student, uh, your mayor, mayor, and your governors have the, this power up to now. Okay, <coughs> they have the operational supervision and they have the operational operational supervision and and what what's the other operational supervision. over the PNP, which is your mayor and your, your governor on your province, okay? They have the power. They are deputized member of the NAPOLCOM. Okay, so dahil dito sa executive order number 1012 na to, uh, they, the mayor and the, the mayor and the mayor and your governor, governor are a deputized member of the NAPOLCOM. They have the they have the operational supervision over the VNP. Okay? 
administrative control. Yan pala dalawa, administrative control and operational supervision of the PNP because they are the deputized because they are being deputized member of the NAPOCOM. So this is your foundation law. This ito yung executive order number 1012. That's why your mayor and your governor are deputized member of the NAPOCOM. Okay? And they have the administrative control and operational supervision over the PNP. Okay, pero during this time over the INP muna, Integrated National Police. Ano ba trabaho nito? Ito yung kumali naging blue na sila. Blue yan. Tapos pare para sang uniform, bumbero na hiwa-hiwalay na. Okay? Executive or Order Number 1040 is transferring the Na Na National Police Commission to the Office of the President again. Okay? Why? Executive Order Number 1040 transfer the administrative control, administrative control and supervision of the INP from the Minister of National Defense to the National Police Commission. Okay? So from the the administrative control over ng ng defense or the national minister of national defense natin which is the DND na nga, Department of National Defense nasa kanila ang direct supervision ng and administrative control ng ng INP natin nun wala pa sa NAPOLCOM si NAPOLCOM is under lang din ng minister of national defense ngayon hiwalay na sila okay your national police commission is now the in charge over the the administrative control and operational supervision of your Philippine National Police during July 10, 1985, guys. Okay? And now, after that, here comes your RA-6975. Ito na yung suking-suking sa board exam nyo, known as the Department of Interior and Local Government Act of 1990. So, suking-suki ito, alam naman natin to December 13, 1990 to was they organized and the, the DILJ and established the Philippine National Police okay, other known as the Department of Interior Local Government Act of 1990 established the PNP, the BFP and the BJMP and the public and the Philippine Public and Philippine Public Safety College so they established the Tri-Bureau in Tatlo and also establishing the Philippine Public Safety College as the, the one who in charge with regards to the educational uh, to the ed to the training or education training of the PNP okay or not only the PNP but also the tribunal next is your act now is an act establishing the PNP under your organization which is your RA8551 during RA6975 my dear student so the qualification of your PNP is not yet baccalaureate, baccalaureate degree or withholding a baccalaureate degree, okay? So, hindi pa ganong professional mga PNP na ang ating tri-bureau nito, my dear student. Not only by the PNP, but also the tri-bureau, okay? They are all governed under RA 6975. Your police, your bombero, and your jail officer, okay? So, training lang. So, pwedeng recruit, yan, recruit. Uh, endorsed by the mayor and the governor, pasok na, yan. So, during those time, the qualification of a baccalaureate degree and a second level eligibility holder is not yet being implemented. While it was enacted during 1998, my dear student, which is the RA8551, which is the professionalization or the Philippine National Police Reform and Reorganization Act of 1998, Actually, it's February 25, 1998, my dear student. Is this law amended certain provision of RA 6975, especially the qualification of a police officer to become a police? Take note, 6975, my dear student, was a law applicable for the Tribureau. Okay? It was created the Tribureau, while the RA 8551 is only applicable applicable to the PNP. Tandaan mabuti, this is the Philippine National Police under a reorganization department of the Interior and Local Government and for other purposes. Your RA-8551 is, is known as the Philippine National Police. Walang sinabing, walang sinabi doon na Bureau of Fire Protection or Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. Only the Philippine National Police Okay, reform, 
Ito lang, PNP lang ang nireform natin and reorganize Act of 1998. As of 1998, my dear student, the PNP or the police should now be a holder of a baccalaureate degree with a second level eligibility, my dear student. Take note, police lang. So, during 1998, my dear student, is still the RA 6975 or the implementing rules and regulation of your jail and your FAR, okay, which is the BJMP and your BFP. Sir, meron din ba silang um, um, professionalization? Kaya naging, naging, naging four years na rin ang, or kailangan, you are baccalaureate degree with second level eligibility para makapasok sa BJMP and BFP. During 1998, my dear student, wala pa. Hanggang 2003, wala sila nun. Okay? Nagkaroon sila noong 2004. Okay? Okay. As I stated, during 2004, my dear student, um, the law on the professionalization of the the BJMP and the BFP is now being implemented under the law which is RA9263 and you, this law RA9263 is known as the BFP or the Bureau of Fire and Protection and the BJMP of Bureau of Jail Bureau of Jail Management and Penology Professionalization Act of 2004 Okay, which is upgrade among others the qualification standard in the designation of the uniform personnel in these agencies. So, ayun ang katapat ng ating RA 8551. Again, take note, during RA 6975, pare-parehas tayo. PNP, BJMP, and BFP. Eight years after, na-implement ang RA 8551, professional na ang PNP natin. So, yung mga hindi pa professional, pwede pa rin pumasok sa tri-bureau. Pero, ano, ano, na tri-bureau? Dalawang bureau, BJMP and BFP during 1998 hanggang 2003. Under the law of RA 6975 pa rin sila. Na-implement lang ang RA 9263, which is the professionalization of your BFP and BJMP noong 2004. So, 2004 onwards hanggang ngayon is now the same. 8551 and 9263 are some, some like amend a certain provision of RA 6975. Ano yun? Yung qualification ng baccalaureate degree. Okay? Sir, paano naman yung mga nasa PNP na natin na mga PNP personal natin na PC sila during during uh, ngayon na existing pa rin sila tas professional na yung ating ating batas which is require na tayo na na 4 years baccalaureate degree okay, simple lang yan my dear student may leeway naman tayo okay, so RA9708 is now being implemented amendment of some provision of RA8551 which is the law amend some pro ah, no, no, amend the law, some provision of RA8551 and 6975 which is on the minimum education qualification for appointment to the PNP and adjusting promotion system approved on August 12, 2009. Ito, nila binibigyan sila ng 5 years. Yeah. 9708 give them 5 years to comply with their educational attainment. So, that's why we have your ETF program. Yan, yung mga ETF natin. So, for them to comply the educational uh, educational qualification for appointment to the PNP. So, applicable lang to sa mga organic personnel natin sa PNP na. Yung nakapasok na, my dear student, na dati pang, dati silang PC. Okay? So, meron pa rin hanggang ngayon. Um, konti na lang, of course, pero meron pa rin. So, this law are for them. Okay? And then, important Filipino personalities in the evolution of the Philippine policy. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, Captain JJ, di ba? Curry Allen Gawa kayo ng mnemonics nyo, especially those who will take the board exam. Um, Curry, Allen, Piat, Cup, and then T. Torres, Cup, Team, C.A.P.T., tapos tul dalong tuldok, J.J., Jones, and Havalera. Who are these personalities? So, dito mo tayo kay Krame, the first Filipino chief of the Philippine Constabulary. So, guys, the first chief of the of the insult of the insular consular and then become become uh, Philippine constabulary is Allen. 
Okay, Captain Henry Allen is the one or the first chief Americano. Okay, well, the first chief of police of the PC na Pilipino ay si General si Brigadier General Rafael Crame. Take note of that. Pilipino, Rafael Crame. First Pilipino chief of the Philippine Constabulary. Well, the first chief of the Philippine Constabulary Americano, Captain Henry Allen. Okay? Okay? Ano yun ba? Pilipino, Rafael Crame. While hindi Pilipino, Henry Allen. Ano yan? Mga first chief ng ng ating Philippine Constabulary. Okay? Next is Okay, Colonel Antonio Torres. Oh, letter T na tayo sa captain. Mamaya tayo sa P. Torres muna tayo. The first Filipino chief of police of the MPD. So, balik tayo doon. First chief of police of Manila Police Department is Curry. George Curry. Captain George Curry. Take note, Americano. Well, nung naging Filipino na first Filipino chief of police of the Manila Police Department during March 2, 1936 is Colonel Antonio Torres from Americano, nagiging Pilipino okay? while Colonel Lamberto Havalera is the first chief of police on Manila Police Department after huh? after the Philippine independence from the US of, of the US of A or the America on July 4, 1946 oh, see, the first chief of police Siyempre, suking-suki na natin sa board exam. Take note, my dear student and my dear reviewee, is Police Director General Cesar Nazareno is the first chief of police of the Philippine National Police. Okay? So, he is the first chief of police, which is Police Director General Cesar Nazareno. Take note. Suki sa board. Okay? So, that is your brief history of the Philippine policing system. I hope you enjoy from the beginning, which is the world history of policing system hanggang ngayon. Laging tatandaan lahat ng sinabi ko. Rin, review nyo na lang. Uh, I hope and pray na nagustuhan nyo to. If you are new to this channel, um, kindly hit the like button and subscribe na rin, mga tol. So, more video pa. Request lang kayo kung anong mga gusto nyo. Susunod ko siguro sociology or some sociology which is my favorite subject which is introduction to, to criminology so yung mga aspiring criminology ko dyan or mga aspiring student kung gusto nyong malinawan what is criminology siguro gagawa ako ng lecture doon okay pero so far yun yung may issue share ko sa inyo I hope and pray na maging okay na tayo for those who will take the board exam um I'll be, I'll be posting a tips on how to slay the dragons which is the 6 dragons Ayan, or 6 area which is the 6 dragons um, keep safe mga aking mga estudyante and and see you soon maybe and yan so far thank you sa pakikinig uh, kung nakarating kayo up to this point and so I'll be making my lecture again and keep updated hit the likes and subscribe with yung bell click nyo yung bell para notify kayo pag nag-upload ako um, yun lang my dear student so upload ko ulit yung mga susunod yan and peace out